In this video I'm going to show you how I used a triadic colour scheme to paint this simple leaf study in watercolour. If you've been following me for a while and doing my tutorials you'll know that I don't often mix colours on my palette. It's something that I've avoided in the past. Lately though I've been experimenting with colours and I have been doing some mixing when I paint. I bought two books on colour theory and they've been influencing the way I paint. One thing I've been trying to do more of is limit the amount of colours that I use for a painting. This book by Stephen Quiller called Colour Choices Making Colour Sense Out of Colour Theory has inspired me to paint some magnolias using a complementary colour scheme. I used only two colours for this painting and it really opened my eyes. This week I've been painting some Shetland sheep dogs using only three colours. I'm not happy with either of those, I overworked both of them, so I'll keep at it until I get a painting that I'm happy with. Recently I painted this simple leaf study for my beginner students. You might have seen my last leaf tutorial where I collected some leaves from the garden and I photographed them in the sun. I did the same thing with these leaves. I photographed them on a piece of white paper in the sun and this is the photo that I ended up using. For this study I decided to use a limited palette again and experiment with a triadic colour scheme, which I've not done before. A triadic colour scheme is one where you use contrasting colours that are not direct complementary colours. So instead of choosing colours that are directly opposite one another on the colour wheel, like I did for the magnolias, I chose three colours that are equal in distance around the colour wheel. I got my colour wheel out and I started with yellow because the leaves had some yellow in them. I counted around four colours and got to blue and then another four and I ended at red. So red, yellow and blue sit in an equal distance around the colour wheel. For this painting I chose Windsor Red, Windsor Yellow and Windsor Blue. I thought that they'd be safe colours to use. They're all staining colours so I knew they'd pack a punch together and I knew that I'd be able to mix what I needed from them. I want to show you how I painted the leaves now but before I do I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes on lots of different creative topics. If you're interested in painting there are a heap of classes that you can choose from. There's also classes on drawing and illustrating. There's photography and videoing classes as well. There's also lifestyle classes and they even have cooking classes. Here's a class by Kate Cook called Adventures in Guanche Painting and Pattern Making Techniques. Kate is a textile designer who works in the fashion industry so she has a wealth of knowledge to share. This class is packed with great tips on painting with gouache and it's suitable for beginners. Kate shows you how to mix the paint, how to layer it and how to use brushes to create different marks. One of the things I learned when I watched this class was that I was using the paint too thin and I was reactivating the layer below which was making a streaky mess so now I know better. If you've not tried Skillshare before and you'd like to have a look at some classes Skillshare has included a link with this video. The first 1000 subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so they can explore their creativity. I've published 12 watercolour classes on Skillshare myself so be sure to check it out. Okay back to this painting, now I want to show you how I painted the leaves. The 
this is a piece of ash cold pressed watercolor paper that I'm using. I've got it in portrait orientation and I've stretched the paper and attached it to my gator board. I've got my three colors, Windsor red, Windsor blue red shade and Windsor yellow. I'll get the three colors out on the palette. Yellow, blue, and red. The first thing I did was paint a wash of Windsor Yellow all over the top of the leaves. I did this on all three leaves. I wanted the yellow to act as a base wash that I could build on top of. When I start to layer the other colours over the top, I planned to leave some of the yellow underwash showing through in places. Now I want to mix a green for that first leaf. So I've got some Windsor Lemon and I'll mix some of the Windsor Blue into it. Let's see what I can come up with. I might put a bit more blue in that to see what it looks like. And now I've gone too dark, so I'll go back into the yellow. and take it back to green. Now I'm starting to work on this big leaf on the left hand side. I'm wetting down the left hand side of the leaf, so not the entire leaf. That's water that I'm putting on the paper. Here you can see the water. When I put the water on, I put it on carefully and I don't leave any puddles lying anywhere. It's just a nice even sheen over the surface. I haven't wet the entire left side. My water comes down to about here. When I put the paint on, I'll only take it up to about here. So I'll paint from the top down to there. And then that leaves me a little gap of water so that when I put the paint on, my paint edges will remain soft. And I'll be able to add some more water down on the bottom half of the leaf. If I was to put water over the entire left side of the leaf, it would dry before I got to paint on it. So I'll do it in sections. I find that's the best way to do it. Here I've got the green that I just mixed. I'm painting that onto the wet side of the leaf. The right side of the leaf is dry. I'm doing that deliberately. I'll show you why later on. So here I've got the green that I mixed from the two colors. And I'm going to dot it over the top and I'll leave some of the yellow underwash showing. So I won't completely cover it with this green. I get the edges in and then I dot it through the middle. I'm at the point where I need to stop with the paint and join up my water. So my water comes down to here. So now I need to wet the bottom half of the leaf and I'm far enough away from the paint that when I put the water on, I won't disturb it. I take the water all the way to the bottom, but again, I'm only staying on the left hand side of the leaf. When I've wet that entire left side, I pick up my green paint and I continue on. What I have to watch is that my brush isn't too wet. I've got water on the paper. I've got water in the paint. I don't need a great deal of water in my brush. My brush just needs to be damp when I pick the paint up. I go all the way to the bottom of the leaf, leaving some yellow paint showing. You can see it through the green. I might take that down the stem. Make sure my edges are okay. When it was dry, I got my pencil out and I drew a little pencil line down the center vein at the base of the leaf. That will remind me not to put any water or paint there. And now I start to wet the paper on the other side. The left side of the leaf has completely dried. I'm not going to disturb it now with this water. So I've left a little dry patch down there. There's no water on that center vein. I've got my green paint again. 
This side of the leaf isn't quite as green as the other side. It's got more yellow showing. So I'm going to put less of the green paint on. So you can see on the reference photo, there's more yellow showing on the right hand side. This water on the paper that I've got is keeping all my paint edges soft. So when I touch my brush to the paper, my paint edges around the edge of the mark that I'm making are soft. I'm not getting any hard, sharp lines anyway. I wet this side of the leaf the same way I did the other side. I wet half of it, put the paint on, and then I wet the other half. And I made sure I left a barrier of water between the two sections so that I wouldn't disturb my paint when I put the second lot of water on. If I had wet the entire paper at once, the section would have dried before I got to paint on it. Okay, back to my palette now. I want to put some darker green over the top. So to darken the green, I add more blue pigment. Because I painted it in two sections, I now have a vein down the middle. So I didn't really have to paint it in, it's already there for me. What I want to do now is to paint this darker colour that I just mixed over the top of that previous layer. So I make sure it's completely dry and then I wet a section of it again. I'm only wetting the left hand side again, not the entire leaf. I put the water on carefully because I know wherever the water is, that's where the paint will go. So now I'm using that darker green paint that I mixed with more blue in it. And like before, I let the other layers show through so I don't completely cover them with this layer. Now I've taken the paint out of my brush. It's just slightly damp and I can use it to spread the paint out a bit, feather the paint around, push it where I want it. Then I wet the top half of the leaf and I continue on with that darker green. Now I want to paint the middle leaf, but I want an orange colour for this. So I'm taking some red and I'll mix some yellow with it. I need a bit more yellow. And I do the same thing on this leaf. I've wet the left hand side of it and I've got that orange that I just mixed. Paint it carefully down the center line. When I get the paint on the bottom half, I join up the water with the top half so that I can put the rest of the paint on up there. And I keep going with my orange paint. This leaf is more orange than it is yellow, so the majority of the yellow underwash I'm covering over this time instead of leaving quite a bit of it showing like I did on the green leaf. But that yellow underwash will serve to give this leaf a nice glow so it'll be nice and bright by the time I've finished it. I painted the other side exactly the same way. I've dried it off with my hairdryer and now I want to add some shadow colours or some dark areas on the leaf but I want to do that on wet paper so I've got to wet the paper again. I want this shadow or darker area to cover the entire bottom section of the leaf not just one side so I've wet both sides at the same time. So I need a darker red so I use the Windsor Red again, but I don't really want to use the straight pure pigment. So I'll mix some of the Windsor Yellow with it to make more of an orange colour. I'll get some more out. 
So I've got more pigment in this mixture, less water. And I'll use that on this wet area. So this area I saw was darker on the reference photo. So I'll paint this on and the wet paper keeps my paint edges soft. So I'm not going to get any hard lines where I don't want them. I paint straight over the top of the vein because on the reference photo, the vein, you can hardly see it there. So I don't need it to be lighter in colour. It's in shadow there. You'll still see that there's a vein there, but it won't be a bright yellow colour. Now I've taken the paint out of my brush and I'm just going to soften that paint edge away even further. I might run it over my vein just to bring it out again a little bit. So you can see that there is a vein there, but it's not very light in colour. Back to my palette now. I'm getting some blue and I'm going to mix some red with it. I want to make a sort of a grey colour if I can. So I want more blue than red. And now I'll get the red. Mix them well. I kept going and I added a bit of water to it just so that it wasn't too dark. I painted in the other leaf. Now I've come back to this leaf in the middle. I've wet it again and now I've got that grey colour that I just mixed. And this is going to go down the edges. This gives me a chance to tidy up any untidy edges. See the paint is moving with the water that's on the paper. Then I wet this section over here and I start to dot some of that colour onto the wet paper. So this, these are some of the spots and markings that are on the leaves. Again, I have to make sure my brush isn't too wet when I do this. Water on the paper, water in the paint. I don't need a great deal of water in my brush. I did the same thing with the other leaves, with that grey colour. Now I'm coming back to this one in the middle. I've just wet it again. And now I've got pure red paint, so Windsor Red straight out of the tube. Nothing mixed with it. And this is going on to these areas where I want it to be a bit darker and more vibrant. I take the paint straight from my palette. And that gives me that beautiful, luscious red. And I do the same thing down the bottom here. So I'm deepening the colours where they're darker. I work on wet paper again. Keeps my paint edges soft. Now I want to mix a darker brown colour, so I'm going to use all three colours. Ignore those other colours on my palette here, I used all of them on a different painting. So with this one I'm concentrating on these three colours. So all three colours together to make a sort of a dark grey browny colour. I want it to be fairly dark, so I'll use a fair amount of pigment and not a lot of water. And then I use that dark colour to darken some of these markings. So this I can do on dry paper. All I'm doing is painting over some of those areas where I put the lighter colour on wet paper. I think this is about the only bit of work I did on dry paper. So I try not to make too many. There are a lot more spots on the reference photo, but I don't want to overdo it on my painting. Then I mixed my 
grey colour from the red and the blue. I wet the shadows and I started to paint them on. And there it is. So that's a fairly simple leaf painting using a triadic colour scheme. If you want to limit the colours you use, try a triadic colour scheme. Another example of a secondary triadic colour scheme that you could use would be orange, violet and green. The range of semi-neutral colours that you could mix from those three colours are beautiful. Stephen Quiller has some examples of paintings that use triadic colour schemes in his book. Here's one I want to try. He's used cobalt, turquoise, magenta and bright red to paint this painting with some sheep. I think that's beautiful. I can see me using that colour scheme for something. Oh, the possibilities. Thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial was useful. As always, a like is appreciated and please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next week with a new painting. I'll see you then. You'll know that I don't often mix colours on my palette. It's something that I've avoided. This week I painted some Shetland shape dogs. I can't reach them. Got them. So I'll keep at it until I get a painting that I'm happy with. Recently I painted this simple, simple, simple leaf study. I'm not, I'm not happy with either of those. I overworked both of them. So I'll keep at it and I'll keep... Ugh. So instead of choosing colours that are directly opposite one another on the colour wheel, what's that? That was Rin Rinza Wed. Yep, new colour. Rinza Wed. <laughs>